diary. We're on December 28, 1942. Today I did the washing. Marion was home from school. We canned 24 quarts of beef. Marion also helped me make some good mincemeat. Now I'm going to take you along on what I'm doing today. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but by the end of the day, we're going to get it all done. So come on, come on, finish your coffee and let's get started because the morning is early and we got a lot of work to do. First thing I have to do every single morning, once a day, I have to go ahead and turn off my pellet stove. And when the fan shuts off, then I have to clean it. I'm going to show you how I clean my pellet wood stove every single morning. So here we are, the pellet stove is turned off. And I know so many of you are fascinated with this piece of equipment. We open up the pellet stove and this is what it looks like. So what I have to do is now I have to clean it off. Well, how do you clean up a pellet stove, you ask? It's a little bit of a dirty job, but I have done it now for a couple years. My husband just recently bought me these gloves, and so I can take these gloves and it won't make my clothing dirty. I take a paintbrush, and what I'm going to do is pretend I'm painting. I'm going to go from the top of the stove and work my way down. I become so used to this that I can do this really, really quick. So what we're doing is we're taking all the ashes and we're putting them way down. Now, a lot of people don't clean the pellet stove every single day, but I do. And that's what keeps it running nice and no problems. You have to have an ash vac. Here is an ash vac. I'm going to be vacuuming this out and I will turn the sound off so you do not have to hear it because it's quite loud. You have to take the chamber pot out. This is the chamber part and you vacuum in it. take a wet paper towel and I clean off the glass. I go ahead and wipe everything down and this gives me good warm heat all winter long. Basically it's just good cleanup. So that is how I clean the pellet stove. Just another chore I have to do in the homestead. Now all I gotta do is push the button and we're off again to start a nice warm day. You have to make sure that you have pellets in your chamber. You have to make sure you have pellets in the top of it. One bag of pellets will take one day when it's severe cold outside. On mild days, a bag of pellets for us will last us two days. It all depends on what thermostat you like it. Hubby likes it really warm, so we have the pellet stove going a lot more than what some other people would. Just another thing I have to do in the homestead. <laughs>
all these peppers so I can put them in my vacuum sealer and freeze these. These I'm going to freeze. Somebody said to me, Tessie, you sure don't let the grass grow beneath your feet. Well, really, you can't, especially when you're on a homestead. There's always so much work to be done. I'm really thankful that I have a small home. I can't imagine having a large home yet to have to take care of. So, what do I do when I'm cutting up my vegetables? Well, let me show you. There on my computer right now I'm watching Silent Night, The Story of the Christmas Carol by 1952. I love vintage movies. I love anything vintage. So I will sit and I will cut up my peppers while I listen to a very vintage Christmas movie. This is just a log, vlog of my life today. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Hanging wash out, putting plastic on my window wells, feeding the chickens, showing a loving gift from a friend. This is all what life is about and I'm really enjoying today. It's sunny. It's been so long since I've seen the sun. <sighs> it's so great to not have the rain and the clouds at least for one day. And as the sun shines, I'm mostly outside. But there's a lot of things to do and I have to keep moving or it won't get done. One thing I need to share with you is by 8 o'clock I'm in bed. I always go to bed really early and that is how I'm able to get so much done because I get up really early in the morning. I'm a morning girl. I know many of you are night owls. Not this girl. I like to go to bed early in the morning. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that but it's all what I was working on today. Take care everyone. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Well, Paul, come on. We're waiting for you. It's a book. I know it's a book. I can't be outside. The girls got a gift from Tim and Tammy. What do you say, girls? Thank you. Do you know what it is? It's a Bible. It's a Bible. And we got... Right? Then you share that one. It's a Bible game. It's a Bible trivia game. It's so awesome. Do you know how to play it? I'll show you how to play it. So I went through all the apples. Behind me here in this metal bucket is where I have all of my potatoes that I grew in the homestead. Go through these 50 pound potatoes and I want to put them in these boxes and that way I have more room. I went through my apples and at the end of the video I'll show you everything I did. And I have lots of vinegar so I'm trying to put all the vinegar together and have this room really organized. It's about 20 to 25 degrees outside. So in here it's probably about 37, 38 right now, but this room doesn't freeze. If we have a real severe cold snap where we reach in the minus 10s and 20s, then we have a little space heater we have to put out here. But generally, this is a perfect place in the winter time for these crops. Somebody asked me, well, Tessie, it gets hot. Yes, it gets 90 degrees in here in the summer, but I don't ever have a problem with my jars at all. My jars never unseal in here. I think it's because I keep it very dark. And to my right, I have a door. This is an exterior door that I can open up and I also have a lot of ventilation in here in the summer. So we got one box of potatoes and we're going to just put them right back up here and the rest of the potatoes I can put back in this bin.
done. There we go. We're done. Now, I won't put the lid on here fully. I'll just let it like that for a little ventilation.